What's up? This is Pete, and today's topic is called The Truth About the Tiny Language. Now, does anyone speak the Tiny Language today? And the answer to that would be no. What we have today is a work in progress by various modern Italian groups who are each attempting to resurrect a language in their own right. Now, the problem with this is the Spanish at the time of contact did not record everyday conversations of the Italian people as we know them by today. This will account for Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. Uh, the borrowings that we see are mostly coming from the Kalinago and the Kono language, along with various inter interpretations that come along uh, with understanding them. What's left of the Taino language are regional place names and a few examples of sketchy sentences. The Spanish poorly documented the Taino language and what we have of it is very scant. In a language, you want to be able to engage in the full discourse, and when it comes to the Taino, we don't have enough examples of day-to-day -day discourse. Oh, one example is here recorded by the Spanish. Dios na boria daca, or Dios na boria dacha. Now, it was commonly translated to, I am a servant of God, or I am God's worker. Now take the word Dios out and let's deal with Naboria Daka. Uh, the problem with this is here in this sentence, uh, there are two first person markers. Um, one is the N, and then the other one is Daka. So for comparison purposes, I would have took the N out and I would have just uh, put uh, Dios Abordia Daca. So if you understand how personal pronouns work, it doesn't make sense to put uh, two different uh, first person pronouns uh, when you're trying to uh, apply sentences. Uh, one example of this is using the word itu for sister. Some people use uh, ditu and other persons use uh, nitu, both meaning my sister. The difference is uh, the two different first person pronouns, one being from uh, Ta Arawak and the other one being from New Arawak. Does archaeology stress daily contact from Mesoamerica? Paralleling Mesoamerica with the Taino usually gets overextended. Now, this is not denying uh, the possibility of uh, contact and trade. Just when you are comparing the Taino, you see that it's mostly our walking influences that stand out the most, in my opinion. Now, how do I see this? Let's talk about uh, the Wahayona story. The Wahayona narrative can be compared to the following stories that we get directly uh, from the South. And I'll start with the Warao. There are two stories from the Warao that correspond to the Wahayona narrative. The first one is the hummingbird with tobacco for the first spot. The second one is Komotari, the first medicine man. In the Lakono, we have uh, the story of Arawanini. And in the Kalinago, we have uh, the narrative of Hiali. From this, in my opinion, the Taiyo narrative is based upon comparison are a series of old stories that came from various indigenous speakers, such as the Kalinago, the Lokono, the Wayu, and the, and the Warao. How does migration play into this? The Circum-Caribbean region, as we know of it, 
was home to various people who migrated in ancient times. The first, as we know of this, is the 4000 BC uh, Casimiroi people who came from Florida and the Yucatan. Now, some people mistake the Casimiroi people with the Mayan. In my opinion, the Casimiroi are pre Mayan. As these migrants did not carry the advanced Mayan culture into the Antilles. This is a key point to remember. We can use the art, we can use Mesoamerican art to help us to understand the Taino, but the real answers is going to lie from studying the South. The second is the 2000 BC migrations, which would be the Otavoy. And then we will have the 500 BC, the Salvador. Now, from this here, we will see uh, the Taino narratives uh, taking shape. We will have the 600 AD to the 1000 AD. That would be the Taino and the Carib period. And then the 1492 uh, colonization to the present. From this, is where we learn and know, we come to know of the common Taino words that we know today, uh, which would be words like Arito, uh, Agurbana, Bojio, Digo, Dujo, Bate, Caribe, Cacique, Semi, and Ture. How many dialects existed on the islands? The Spanish recorded that there were upper and lower Macorís, Siguayo, Classic Taino, and Siboné. This is all that we know about the people of that time. The Guanajuato Bay, as we know, were an isolated people at the very end of Cuba. Possibly they were people from the Casimir migration. Now, the Yeti is what we know the most about because of the thorough documentation of the Kalinago people and their culture. Now, this is where confusion would come in. The men's and the women's language. This comes from our knowledge of the Kalinago. Remember, we don't know enough about the Taino. This is why comparison is very important. The Kalinago men's and women la women's language uh, come from a mixture of a marriage between the Arawak and main Car mainland Carib speakers. And we also find that uh, the Kalinago language is a uh, new Arawak. And in, in my opinion, based upon uh, my studies and along with the people I work with, uh, New Arawak uh, would be is much older than the Ta Arawak. Closing out, the best way to understand the Taino is by studying word comparison. When you study words and you start and you start to uh, copy down the, the relationships and you'll be able to get a, a better uh, perspective in the relationships of the Taino with uh, other Arawakan languages. Uh, one example that we showed before is how to say what's your name. Three examples. Uh, one is Kabidi in the Garifuna. The other is Kate Bidi in the Karnago, and the other is Ama Bidi in the Nokono. The point is to get familiar with the languages and narratives mentioned so that you can become familiar and see what is consistent and what isn't. To get a clear eye on what uh, we have on the Taino, um, I highly recommend to uh, ask for Jerry Roman's Arawakan language comparison. 
uh, is very helpful to be able to see um, all of the relationships in regards to the title. This will help to make the subject matter uh, a little more clearer. The deeper you get into this, you're going to see everyone has their own take. And this is very natural uh, to happen. The key about this is learning about the languages that are closely related to the Taino. And once again, uh, these would be um, Garifuna, Kainago, Lokono, Wayu, and Warao. Now, at some point, we're going to have to have a language symposium. And the point will be, what are we going to use? Until these things are discussed and settled all in one place, then all we're going to have at the end of the day is just going to be interpretations. When it comes to this endeavor, um, in regards to the Italian language, um, things to keep in mind is uh, learning about word correspondence, um, finding words that relate to each other. Another thing with this is uh, understanding the, um, the representations of personal pronouns, uh, prefixes and suffixes, and, and all that stuff. Uh, understanding how um, the language works so that way with that um, you'll be able to learn how to um, apply tiny words that you know and use them in uh, sentences that are practical so that's my take peace